Hey guys, so in my last video, I got a lot of comments that were disagreeing with me. Now the last video, if you didn't watch it, was uh, my recommendations for the best generals for a player that is free to play. And I saw three things mainly. One, I did not mention Queen Bodica as a free to play general. Number two, I didn't mention Martinus or Roland as a free to play general. And three, did not mention Minamoto as a free to play general. Now the reason I didn't mention any of these generals is uh, most of them are just bad. And in the case of Queen Bodica, she's not bad, but she's not a good general for a free-to-play player. So in this video, I'm going to explain why if you're a free-to-play player, you should not use any of these generals. And you should just not use Martinus, Roland, or Minamoto at all. They're just objectively worse. Now, First, we're going to cover Queen Bodica. Now, these are the stats total for Queen Bodica, everything she buffs. This is her base skill. This is what her skill at one red star gives you. And this is what five red stars will give you. Uh, this is her specialty. And then this is very important down here, which is the thing that most people don't consider when they're looking at generals. This is what you get for the attributes of the general. Now, you have to calculate these things manually and cultivation does play a part in these as well. I have other videos on how to calculate these numbers, but this is the percent buff you get from these. And this is this is a very important part of the calculation. Now, these are the totals for each of the categories, mounted, ground, ranged, and siege, and what they give for each buff. Now, this is the total for across the board, which when we're looking at a defensive general, it might be worth to consider this, uh, considering that every troop type is going to be used in your defense and is going to play its own role. Looking at Queen Bodica, these numbers right here are based off of a level 30 general, fully uh, 500 cultivation, so any extra you have with the dragon that gives you extra stats with that, that will increase it a little bit. If you're higher than level 30 with the general, it'll increase it a little bit. But level 30 gives you a general good idea of how it's going to look from there on, and it's not going to change too much when you compare them to other generals. The how they perform is going to remain about the same. We see she has 268% attack buff to mounted, 254% attack defense, and 325% uh, HP to mounted. Looking at someone like Zachary Taylor, who is who I would recommend as a free general, uh, these numbers are far lower. And then Richard the Lionheart, who I would also recommend as a free general, they're also much lower. So the thing that people are saying is that if you have a T1 trap, which uses a lot of T1 mounted, you want these buffs to buff your T1 mounted, so you want to use Bodica. However, that's not true, and I'll show you why. These are the base stats for a T1 mounted troop. Once you apply the separate buffs for each, this is how much of the extra stats you're going to get from each of these generals. Bodique is going to give you an extra 589.6 attack per T1 mounted troop. Richard is going to give you 393.8, and Taylor's going to give you 367.4. Now, if you're doing a proper T1 trap, you will know that you have flat refines on your general gear. I want you to look at these numbers real quick, and think about the numbers that you get from flat refines from your gear. These numbers are minuscule. They do not matter. You will not see a change in your T1 defense if you're using Bodica, Richard, or Taylor. Because these numbers are so small compared to the numbers that actually matter for T1 defense, which is going to be the flat refines on the gear. So, Bodica is not going to help your T1 defense in any meaningful way. What generals are going to help your T1 defense? Taylor will most definitely help your T1 defense. Why? Because he buffs the archers. How do you hit the archers? Archers can't attack archers until the mounted are all dead. If you have a T1 wall, that's never going to happen. So your archers aren't going to get attacked by archers. The mounted won't be able to get through the other mounted. And the ground troops aren't going to be able to get through the mounted. So that's three troop types that aren't even going to try to shoot at your archers just because they can't get past your T1 mounted. Now, the siege. Siege will be able to shoot at your archers a little bit. But once your siege comes in range of their siege, the siege would rather target siege, so it's going to stop shooting your archers. 
so there's very little time for the enemy siege to actually shoot your mounted your uh ranged troops and if you have a nice thick t1 siege wall then the enemy siege isn't going to get through the through your cannon fodder siege to attack your uh your ranged troops so your ranged troops are very safe in a t1 trap keep which is why i would recommend taylor richard why would we use richard because Richard has very nice buffs across the board. If we look at Richard the Lionheart, we can see that he buffs pretty much every single troop type. And the stats aren't super high for any of the ones, but he buffs all of them. And that gives him a very high total. If we look at the totals, and we sort by the totals, we can see that for total buffs across the board, every troop type, Richard the Lionheart ranks in third. Queen Bodica is down here. So he's going to give you more buffs overall for more different troop types. Richard also has the advantage that for a fleet free general, he does a pretty good job buffing the siege. And siege can be an essential part of your defense if you want to be a more siege-focused defense, which is a very excellent choice if you uh, want to do that. The siege defense might not be the best for everyone, but it is a solid option. And the general buffs that he gives across the board are very solid. Now, what is a use case for Bodica? Because she's not totally useless. I'll probably put in the thumbnail that she's totally useless or something to get you to click on this. But she does have uses. The uses is in an actual mounted defense. Not a C1 trap. If you're using Bodica, you want your high tier cavalry. You want a lot of high tier cavalry so you can make use of these buffs. So she'll actually matter in your defense. Now the problem with the high tier cavalry defense is it's going to really struggle against a ranged march. So how are you going to overcome that ranged march? You're going to overcome it by the power of buffs alone. How are you going to overcome through the power of buffs alone if you're a free-to-play player? The answer is you're not. If you're going to run a Bodica defense, then you need high buffs for your mounted troops. And if you're a free-to-play player, you're just not going to have those buffs. And there are a lot better defenses that you could use with your T1 trap. So that's why I would not recommend Bodica for a free player. Okay, now let's talk about Martinus, Hannibal, and Roland. And let's also talk about Yuffie. Okay. The things we're considering for Mounted Generals, uh, we're going to consider their maxed out specialty because we're looking at the free generals and this is a very it's a very doable thing to do and it's what you should be striving for because part of being a free player is you have to think ahead you have to choose generals that just don't help you in the moment but ones that are going to be an investment over the long term so that's why we're going to be comparing the fully maxed out stats we're going to be looking at their specialty covenant and skin if they have any which in this case martin is is the only one that has a skin so if you're a free player, you probably won't even have this. But it really doesn't give you a whole lot anyways. And then the attributes. As I said in the last video, uh, this one is calculated off of the level 30 general 500 cultivation. Like I said, if you're higher than that, it's not going to change a whole lot. But these are important numbers to consider just so we can get a more complete picture of the look. Let's sort it by total attack and see who has the total attack. Martinus will give you 333% total attack for your mounted. Hannibal gives you 295%. Roland will give you 277%. And Yuffie will give you 250%. Now, a lot of people, this is where their comparison stops. They say, okay, Martinus is the highest attack. We're good. We're done. That's not the whole story. If we look at the defense, you can see Roland is pretty high. 239 Yuffie has 214, Hannibal 196, Martinus 183, looking at the HP, Hannibal has 252, Yuffie 231, Martinus 221, and Roland 219. So we can see those. Uh, they go back and forth. They're not super important stats when we're considering. I mean, they are important, but that's not generally what people are looking at. If we compare them side by side, we can see Hannibal does have the highest defense, but he does have pretty low, I mean the highest HP, but he does have pretty low defense. 
Yufi is uh, reasonably average across the board. Martinus is really lacking in terms of HP and defense. And Roland is pretty solid. When you combine these numbers together, uh, Hannibal and Roland are going to be about the same for their attack and defense. Yuffie is going to be slightly behind, and then Martinus is just very squishy. Here's the important part that nobody really considers, or they'll look at it, but they don't actually consider what that means. March size. Yuffie has a 20% march size, which is massive. Roland, 16% march size. That's huge. Hannibal and Martinus, 0% march size. Not a single extra march size percent for these guys. Now, a lot of the YouTubers that you watch, that's all they're going to do. They're going to look at these stats and they're going to make their determination based on that. But that's not the whole story. How does march size and attack interact? That's the increased attack column. This is a calculator that I created to tell you how much these thing, these stats are going to give you in attack based on whatever type march you put into this box right here. Right now, let me look what this is calibrated to. Okay, this is the base attack for a tier 15 mounted troop. This right here is the buffs that you would get with 2000% extra buff, which is high, but... We can lower it if we want to look at something different, which we might do. This right here is a base K40 rally spot. And this is a buffed extra 2.5 million march size. This is a pretty high tier march, but this is what you should be working towards. And that's why we're going to consider this as the main focal point when we're looking at these generals. So with this march, with Roland's attack and march size stats, he's going to give you an extra 79.5 billion damage. Yufi is going to give you an extra 76.9, 76 round up to 77 billion damage. Martinus, he's going to give you an extra 76.6 .6 billion damage. And then Hannibal, way down here, 67.8 billion damage. Hannibal is a very bad mounted general. There are only four other mounted generals that have lower damage than Hannibal. That's that's pretty insane. Hannibal is not a good mounted general. You should never use Hannibal under any situation. Martinus. His damage is in the same tier as Roland and Yufi. His defense stats, however, are lower than Roland and Yufi, and he's a lot harder to get than Roland and Yufi. So there is absolutely no reason to use Martinus over either Roland or or you feet. Now, with these numbers, we can clearly see that Roland is the objectively better general. End of story. Let's talk about Yuffie for a second. Why would you ever want to use Yuffie over Roland? The reason you would want to use Yuffie over Roland is Yuffie does buff the ground troops as well and can be used equally as effectively for ground troops as mounted troops. So if you would like to save resources, Yuffie is a viable option to use for both marches. However, if we're just comparing the mounted, then Roland is the clear winner. So, that's why I would never recommend Hannibal or Martinus for a free player, or any player for that matter. There's literally no reason to use them over Roland. Okay, now let's talk about Electra, Minamoto, and Winfield Scott looking at the same stats as before. If we look at the total attack, Electra and Minamoto have the same total attack. This calculator is also based on a level 30 general. Winfield Scott falls below with about a lower 30% attack. Defensively, they're all pretty comparable, with uh, Electra being slightly higher with about an extra 15% edge. HP-wise, they're uh, pretty much in the same ballpark. Minamoto does have a little bit more, an extra 15%, so it balances out defensively. Electra and Minamoto have no comparable difference defensively. Uh, Winfield Scott is a little bit on the lower end defensively, but it's not a huge amount. It what you will notice a difference, but it's not it's not too crazy. Let's look at the march size once again, very important, and this is where people don't take this into consideration. Minamoto has 0% march size. Winfield Scott has 20% march size, and Electra has 16% march size. That's pretty big. 
Let's sort this by largest to smallest. This one is also 2000% buff, tier 15 troops, K40 rally spot, all that jazz. Electra with that march is going to give you an extra 52.2 billion damage. Winfield Scott's going to give you an extra 50.7 billion damage. Minamoto, uh, he's going to give you 42.3 billion damage. Those are pretty big differences. Looking at this, we can see that Electra, in terms of damage, is the absolute positively clear winner. And then Winfield Scott is also competitive in this uh, arena. Now, since Electra is the clear winner for these two generals, why would you want to use Winfield Scott over Electra? Well, Winfield Scott is a lot easier to get. He doesn't need a dragon to activate all of his buffs, although if you don't put a dragon on Electra, it's not going to be the end of the world. You're only going to lose, I believe it was either 25 or 40% attack, so it's not too bad. The main reason you'd want to use Winfield Scott over Electra is he's a lot easier to farm. He's in the tavern. That's a lot easier to get. Electra is only available in uh, the relics. This calculation also takes into account her skin, which it's not a whole lot of stats that you get from her from her skin, but it is a little bit. So keep that in mind. The difference will be a little bit less effectively between her and Winfield Scott. So clearly these two generals are superior to Minamoto. Okay, and now to the final part of the video. The leading or the marching clause. Now, I know some people are going to say that Minamoto and uh, Martinus have the leading clause, so you want to use them for reinforcing and all that. However, uh, Winfield Scott and Yuffie both have the leading clause as well, so there's no reason not to use either of those two generals in that case. The other thing to mention is that in a lot of cases and where you think the marching clause would not work, such as like buildings and battlefields, it actually does. What I would recommend is if you want to know more about these clauses is I did make a video testing some of them. I didn't test all of them. And then I did see that Red Ebony posted a video that uh, about using defensive generals on the wall for reinforcing. I watched that video and his results do look like they were well done. Uh, before I recommend somebody else's content, I make sure to look and see that they did the numbers right. From what he did show, it did look like the results were accurate, so those particular videos I would feel safe recommending and trusting the results on. So watch uh, all those videos if you want more information on that, but yeah, that's not really a valid excuse for recommending Martinus or Minamoto when there's other leading the clause generals that are just better. Anyways, I hope y'all guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed me uh, addressing these myths, maybe leave some comments with some other ones you've heard that uh, you'd like me to take a look at, and I'll uh, debunk or confirm those as well. And I'll uh, catch y'all in the next one.